All right, guys, I am about to remove this tire. I've never removed the, the tire on the Tenray, but this is a TK70 tire. And unfortunately, I have some sort of uh, air leak. There are cracks along the side here. And I've been riding with this too long. And within a day, it actually goes down in pressure. So I'm going to go ahead and remove it. So here's the tire. It's a little bit of a flatter profile. It's a Kenda tubeless and it was uh, probably one of the cheaper tires that I could get. On the left side we have this massive bolt. We're gonna have to remove that and you need a pretty big wrench and uh, this one is a, a lot of power here. On the side of the tire we have a Allen bolt that we have to undo. This is a pinch bolt for the axle. These you can put a um, breaker bar in here and just loosen it. So now I have the wheel off the bike. My rear brake pads are very, very thin. I still have a little bit before it hits the, the metal, but of course this is done. Amazing shaft drive by Yamaha. It's uh, a very small unit, you know, like I was... Uh, when you look at it from the left side, it looks bigger, but... And I've really never changed a tire on a shaft-driven bike, and I was very surprised with the weight of the wheel. But that's pretty normal, because the, the wheel has got more components than the regular wheels. So the trick to removing the wheel, I found, is that there's this pinch bolt you need to, to leave that pinch bolt attached because what I did is I loosened this first and then I got on the other side to remove this which is the bolt that attaches here and I was like spinning it and that was spinning so I couldn't like um, loosen it so what you need to do is just tighten this bolt and then loosen it and then you can remove the shaft but before you do move the brake caliper and this whole arm and it's a pretty simple process um i didn't realize you didn't even need to do that so if you undo this bolt you can just pull this thing straight out it's ingenious how simple this system is i i do like what yamaha did you know like i really appreciate things when they're easy to maintain and this one does seem very easy to maintain. It's a very simple process. So I definitely hate doing tire changes. It's something I really hate, but it needs to be done. So I'm gonna go ahead and start doing it. I did remove the valve. You know, the valve is just the, the little thing in there. There's this bolt here, and that is the ABS sensor. And you, um, you remove it just by undoing that. It's some soap. And I don't need soap yet, but it kind of helps. Uh, the first thing you got to do when you're uh, changing a tire is break the beads. And what I do is, I just use this. Other people use different methods. And what I do is, I push down like this. I'm just going to put some soap in there. And I just go around the tire. I've done this in the beginning. That way it's not touching the... Uh, the rotor so if you're hearing this there's like these kind of cracking and that's uh, the bead kind of separating from the rim there we go and that's it you see the uh, the rim now kind of snaps down right over here there we go that's exactly what you want is coming on. One of the things that you can do if you don't like this process like I do is um, you can remove the tire and what a lot of people do is it's oftentimes better just to take it to a shop and if you dismount the, top, the wheel from your motorcycle and take it in it's a lot cheaper. If you can just um, See, I can't get the other lever in there yet. If you look at my spoons here, they are facing up. 
But eventually I, what I do is I take this one the other way and I counter, so I'll do that. So I'll put one here and when I can, try and feel for the tire and just kind of push it up on the rim slowly. And then, and I'm just doing that so I can separate the tire from the rim. And it's, um, if you do it slowly, you can get it done. And that goes the rim. So this one was a lot easier because the other side is done. So at this point we have the beads broken on both sides. And what we have to do now is just bring the tire off the rim. So this is a tire lever that I used to pry out the tire from the tube. And what I'm going to do is like take this tire lever, put it inside here, kind of just uh, now twist it like this and push it. Once I get it to this, I can take my tire lever and just kind of pry it off. There we go, there we go, so. There. And we have the tire off. We have the old tire and the new tire. The new tire is a little bit smaller, but you have to make sure you have the orientation right. There's a dot here. Usually dots and arrows mean where the valve is going to be. So that's my valve stem, so that's where I usually want to point it because that's the heaviest part of the tire. <clears throat> this is going to be the way the tire is going to be going. That means that the rim is going to enter from here. And then line up the stem with that dot. You don't have to line it up right away. But you, when you put the tire in there, the second bead, you'll need it. Let's get plenty of soap in here. This is one of the tricks that really helped me out putting tires in. And especially on the inside too. On the other side, just get as much as possible. One of the things I was using before was WD-40. And it did work, but you should not use WD-40, just um, a heads up guys. Let's get the tire in there. Getting that initial tire in is actually a little bit simple. There we go. It together, like this. keep note of that high spot. There we go. And now, the part that I don't find fascinating at all is mounting the tire on the rim. So just go around like this with your tire levers and just work it slowly. Actually, I'm going to push down on this. Give it some more slack, I believe. That's what you have to do. Okay. This last portion is always the hardest for me. And I just like to get plenty of lubrication on here. Last chunk. Always the most difficult. Definitely the type of thing you need to have a helper. Yeah, it's actually going in. Okay, there we go. Oh, it's actually going in. That's it. Wow, the tire is in there. There's the valve. There we go. One pop. All right, let's put some more air. And you should hear two pops. I usually put it at 40. And we're ready to put this back on the bike. And the brakes and everything. And now all I have to do is push the axle in. Wow, this is so much easier than a chain drive. 
On the chain drive, you have to align it. This doesn't need anything. So at this point, all I have to really do is bolt that uh, nut over there and tighten this. At first, my, uh, these little clips kind of fell off and I was wondering where they go, but it is this way. So the way you put them in is this slot at the bottom goes in between and they attach to the arms on this side here and they just kind of clip into place and at first I wasn't sure where they go because normally these little metal clips go on top of brake pa um, the brake pads on a lot of motorcycles so it was kind of kind of curious but uh, now they're there <clears throat> the cool thing about this system is that you don't really have to do much to remove the caliper to change the brake pads the side here and they just kind of slide in and that's pretty much it it's kind of an ingenious um, system what I like to do is push this caliper or the piston in that way I can slide it in and the way I do it is I use a uh, vice like this like a little mini vice and I just kind of push it in I think we're pretty good here the only thing that we have to do is take it out for a spin funny I have you know brake pads here and I was hoping that one of these would actually fit the bike but these are brake pads from various motorcycles I've had over the years that I can't seem to ever use all right guys I am about to take the Tenray out for a spin I got a new tire the brake pads I need them but uh, I don't have them quite yet but I should be able to ride it for a little bit it's still on the pad not exactly the greatest thing to do but I think it's going to be nice not having to air up the tire like every single ride like I've been doing so when you first install a new tire I think most people know you have to break it in feel it out it seems to turn very well it's less noisy it seems than the last one you know I think I paid 50 something dollars 50 or 60 dollars for the rear tire it's a little bit thinner than the one that's on the bike that was on the bike 150 but if you dark side people have put 205s in there you can put like a fairly large tire I think even a 180 motorcycle tire man this bike is really good for cold temperatures it hides your legs and everything like if you look at my legs they're kind of tucked behind the radiator you know the radiator on the super 10 is right up here it's on the left side 64 degrees out and normally one thing one thing that happens is that usually my legs and stuff gets very cold because you know there's no wind protection in your legs in most bikes there is a little bit of a deflection in bikes but this bike has so much because they flared out this this top section so much that it just creates this bubble of wind protection you know when it comes to picking an FJR or this you know I'd go with this left and right equal amount of miles per gallon it's a lot more flexible of a, of a bike you can see much better because you're upright and these ADV bikes just make it so much more usable I have 53,000 on the Super 10 and I am going to see how long this damn thing is going to last it should last me at least 5,000 miles maybe okay. you know one thing I'm finding is that putting this bike on the center stand is a little bit difficult it's um it's a little bit difficult like uh, probably the hardest i think for me at, at least i know a lot of people are gonna go like eh, you're a puss eh, you're right so here's the tire and you see there's like all sorts of grease i got grease on the sides that's why i'm not really going fast i'm just going a little bit slow but tire is good our bolts seem to be holding up ABS seems to be good so there's that um, 
mark for putting it against the valve. I didn't exactly get it right, but that's better than nothing. And on the left side, the bolt looks good, so we're pretty much set. There's not much to do. Just gonna just look at it once in a while to make sure that the the bike is doing good. But yeah, the bike, you see like how this part gets flared out so much. That way, this protects you from the wind. It's kind of an ingenious thing that Yamaha did. I don't think they did it intentionally, but... Or maybe they did. It's kind of like a weird thing too, is that the fan is here. And you can see the previous owner did drop it. But the bike is brilliant. And from the rear, it looks pretty good. I, I, you know, this is the spot where bikes generally look very good. And this one does. It looks butch. Especially with the, um, the crash bars. I think it's a good bike. It definitely is a much better bike, I think, than the, the FJR 1300. I just don't see too much point to buying proper sport touring bikes. Um, the best type of bikes I find are just the adventure bikes for sport touring. I'm actually going to put it on touring mode. So if you really want a sport touring bike, what you should do is buy an adventure bike. Because essentially sport touring bikes are, that whole segment is dead. You know, they still make them. The FJR has got a really good uh, following. But I don't see too much point of it anymore. I really don't. Uh, adventure bikes are much better. It used to be 10, 15 years ago, people did want sport touring machines for commuting and riding. But now that adventure bikes have gotten to this size, they just these just make so much better bikes for everyday riding than sport touring. 